All right, welcome to screencast number one for unit three, lesson two. This lesson is about the periodic table. Your essential question on page 124, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the relationship between the arrangement of the elements on the periodic table and the properties of those elements. Okay, so let's take a look at the lesson. All right, I'm on page 126. What are elements? Well, people have long sought to find the basic substances of matter. It was once believed that fire, wind, earth, and water in various combinations made up all objects. But by the 19, sorry, by the 1860s, uh, scientists considered that there were at least 60 different basic substances or elements. They saw that many of these elements shared certain physical and chemical properties and began to classify them. Okay. Um, knowing what you know about the properties of matter, try to classify the elements below. So we have sulfur, chlorine, copper, bromine, mercury, and bismuth. Okay. Um, you can do this yourself, but, you know, a couple of suggestions. You can um, categorize them. Are they metals versus nonmetals? Maybe are they solids versus liquids versus gases? That kind of thing. Okay. All right, looking at page 127. Okay, how are the elements organized? Around this time, meaning the 1860s, a Russian chemist named Dmitry Mendeleev began thinking about how he could organize the elements based on their properties. To help him decide how to arrange the elements, Mendeleev made a set of element cards. Each card listed the mass of an element, um, mass of the atom of an element, as well as some of the other elements' properties. Mendeleev arranged the cards in various ways, looking for a pattern to emerge. When he arranged the element cards in order of increasing atomic mass, the properties of those elements occurred in a periodic or regularly repeating pattern. For this reason, Mendeleev's arrangement of the elements became known as the periodic table. So he is the one credited with um, arranging or, or coming up with the first periodic table of the elements. Mendeleev used the periodic pattern in his table to predict elements that had not yet been discovered. All right, in the early 1900s, British scientist Henry Moseley showed how Mendeleev's periodic table could be rearranged. After determining the numbers of protons in the atoms of elements, he arranged the elements on the table in order of increasing atomic number. Um, or the number of protons. Mosley's new arrangement of the elements corrected some of the flaws in Mendeleev's table. The periodic table is a useful tool to scientists because it makes clear many patterns among the elements' properties. The periodic table is like a map or a calendar of the elements. Okay, so you need to understand that the word periodic just means something that occurs repeatedly or at predictable intervals. Okay. Mendeleev's table was arranged by atomic mass, but Mosley arranged the periodic table by atomic number, okay, which reordered a few elements and fixed a couple of problems. Okay. Um, those questions down there at the bottom are for you to do yourself, so let's go on. All right, I'm now on page 128 and 129, and this is our periodic table. Um, please understand that depending on who makes the table and how they um, decide to do some things, it may not look identical to this. For instance, the one that hangs up in the classroom um, has more color-coded categories than this one does. Um, but they're all basically the same. They've all got the same basic characteristics. Okay. Um, look, for instance, at the purple uh, writing at the top um, above where it says group one and it points down uh, down the side it says a row of elements is called a period um, another purple arrow says a column of elements is called a group or family okay a row of elements is a period that's a horizontal row a column of elements is a group or family that's a vertical column up and down okay and if you will notice on this periodic table, most of your elements are blue. And if you will look at the key, you see that blue elements are classified as metals. 
purple elements are classified as nonmetals, and orange elements are classified as metalloids. Then if you will look at the actual chemical symbol in each box, if the chemical symbol is in black, then that element is solid at room temperature. If the chemical symbol is written in red, that element is liquid at room temperature. And if that element is written in white, then that element is gas at room temperature. Okay. Please look at the key above. Um, they took out one box, sort of as an example. The box that they took out was aluminum, but it could have been any, any one of them. Um, and they point out that for aluminum, 13 is the atomic number, which means that's the number of protons. Um, AL is the chemical symbol for aluminum. Then they have the element name and then they have the average atomic mass. Average atomic mass takes into account the fact that not all aluminum atoms have 13 protons and 14 neutrons. Most of them do, but some of them don't. And so the average atomic mass is like if you could take the mass number of all the atoms of aluminum and add them up and divide by the number of aluminum atoms there were, you'd get an average. And that's why we call it the average atomic mass. Okay. And that's just to help remind you that, remember, all um, atoms of the same element are not necessarily identical because they can have varying numbers of neutrons. Okay. Okay. At this point, we're going to go back and take a look at the highlights. I'm on page 126. And I highlighted that by the 1860s, scientists considered that there were at least 60 different basic substances or elements. They saw uh, that many of these elements shared certain physical and chemical properties and began to classify them. Okay, And then for number five, I just put a little reminder, your categories, uh, categories might be uh, metal versus nonmetal, uh, solid versus liquid versus gas, whatever. But that's for you to do and decide. On page 127, I highlighted or underlined um, when he, meaning Mendeleev, when he arranged the element cards in order of increasing atomic mass, the properties of those elements occurred in a periodic or regularly repeating pattern. For this reason, Mendeleev's arrangement of the elements became known as the periodic table. In the next paragraph, I started underlining where it says Henry Moseley showed how Mendeleev's periodic table could be rearranged. After determining the numbers of protons in the atoms of the elements, he arranged the elements on the table in order of increasing atomic number or number of protons. Moseley's new arrangement of the elements corrected some of the flaws in Mendeleev's table. Okay, and then I just made some notes out to the side that, for instance, periodic is something that occurs repeatedly at predictable intervals or occurs in a regular repeating pattern, something like that. Okay, Put a reminder out to the side that Mendeleev's table was arranged by atomic mass. And then to help answer number six, Moseley's uh, periodic table was arranged by atomic number, which reordered the elements in a few places and fixed a few of the problems. Okay, The calendar and number seven is for you to do on your own. Okay, so let's take a peek at page 28 and 29. 128 and 129. Alright, I'm on page 128 looking at the periodic table. I have underlined where it says a row of elements is called a period. So the row that hydrogen and helium occupy, that is row 1 or period 1. The next one, uh, period 2 or row 2, that would be lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. Period 3, or row 3, is sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Period 4, or row 4, is much longer because there are um, more items in it. Row 5. Uh, row 6 and row 7, if you will notice, there is a little space between lanthanum and hafnium, and between actinium and rutherfordium. Um, this is because all of those elements down below the table really should fit in right there. The reason why they pulled those out and put them underneath the table 
is that really the table is too fat uh, or too wide to fit conveniently on a piece of paper. If they put those two rows where they're actually supposed to be, it makes the periodic table a whole lot wider. It's it's not done for any crazy reason other than that. Okay, it just makes the table more compact. So usually we see those rows um, down underneath the table. And the reason why those two are um, uh, why row 6 and row 7 are, are contain so many more elements that has to do with electron um, arrangements, but that's not anything that you will learn um, in 8th grade. It's reserved for chemistry. Alright, um, so I even put a bubble around that. It says these elements are placed below the table to allow the table to be narrower. On page 129 I put a little thought bubble around the zigzag line separates metals from nonmetals. Remember that along the zigzag line you have your metalloids. Okay, so it's really, really, really important for you to know that horizontal rows and are periods. Okay, that vertical columns are the same as groups and family, families. Um, all right, so let's proceed on to uh, page one thirty.